I want to start with a problem. Uh, I want to start with a problem. Uh, we, we, and we will later see how this connect, relates to cryptography. So in this problem, uh, Alice and Bob are two spaceships arriving on, on adjacent cells inside an array filled with random numbers. Their goal is to stop on the same cell or to meet. Um, what Alice and Bob cannot do is that they cannot communicate and they do, do not know which one of them is to the left of the other. Uh, what Alice and Bob can do is that each of them is allowed to read T cells from the array and then decide where, on, what cell, on, on what cell to stop on. Um, so again, their, uh, their goal is to stop on the same cell. Uh, it can be shown that no matter what strategy Alice and Bob follow, they cannot guarantee to stop on the same cell. Um, so the spaceship's problem is, what strategy should Alice and Bob follow in order for them to maximize their probability to meet uh, or to synchronize? So this is the spaceship problem. And let us now uh, view a simple solution for the spaceship problem. Uh, so in this solution, each of, this, each of the spaceships uh, uh, read T consecutive cells starting from their starting, po start, st starting for, from their arrival point. And after reading all these cells, they go back and stop on the minimal value they encountered. So this is uh, the algorithm they use. And let us now analyze this algorithm. So since Alice and Bob start on adjacent cells, the only way they will not find the same minimum is if the minimum uh, is on one of the cells, only one of them red. There are only two, uh, there are only two cells uh, which only one of them red, which are these two. And this means that uh, the probability for Alice and Bob to not synchronize is about 2 over t. So this is uh, a basic solution for the space hip problem. And let us now uh, show, uh, uh, let us now see the original motivation for the space hip problem. Uh, so this is the homomorphic secret sharing. Um, and, and this is a concept introduced by Boyle, Gilboa, and Ishai for BGI uh, two years ago. And it is an alternative to fully homomorphic encryption. In the very high level, the difference between HSS and FHE is that HSS is more efficient. However, it is less functional. Um, so the first problem of morphic secret sharing solves is the problem of, uh, out, of securely outsourcing a heavy computational task. Um, so indeed, suppose we want to compute some public function uh, f on a secret input x. What HSS does is to spl split x into two parts or two shares and send each of the, uh, each, each of the shares to a different server. Uh, each server then computes some, uh, then evaluates some uh, function over his share, uh, and this is how the HSS scheme goes. So what are the requirements we have from, uh, from a good HSS scheme? We want privacy. We want that each of these shares does not easily reveal information about the uh, original secret input X. Uh, another thing we want is efficiency. We don't want the servers to, uh, uh, we don't want the, uh, the overhead of the evaluation of the, of the servers to be too high compared to F. And finally, we want correctness. We want to easily, uh, uh, to easily recover F of X from the, uh, from the outputs of the servers. Uh, so indeed, after, uh, after presenting the, the concept of HSS, BGI ma managed to construct a group-based HSS protocol. Uh, their protocol, uh, the security of their protocol, uh, relies only on the traditional decisional Diffie-Hellman hardness assumption, uh, and also their, uh, the communication complexity of their protocol is low. However, their, uh, uh, the, the construction is, is only good for a restricted class of functions, mainly for branching programs. Uh, HSS has many applications, such as private information retrieval and secure multi-party computation in sublinear communication. Uh, the sublinear communication is the interesting part in here. Um, 
So let us now go uh, uh, present the HSS protocol in more detail. Uh, the HSS protocol uh, deals with uh, functions f that can be implemented as a sequence of the following kinds of, of instructions. Uh, the main one uh, of them are the, the middle two, which uh, enables us to add, uh, to add two memory variables. And, uh, and, and the second one uh, allows us to multiply an, a, a, an, an arbitrary memory variable by only a, an input. So this is where uh, HSS is not generic. Um, so what these servers do, the, the evaluation functions uh, that are on the servers, uh, mainly uh, simulate the function f instruction by instruction. Um, the main thing about them, that, uh, about the evaluation functions, that they preserve the following variant, that each variable y uh, appearing in the program f equal to, uh, is equal to two corresponding variables that lie on the, on the servers. Uh, so in the, this means that uh, the servers share the, each memory variable in, in the program of f. Uh, so basically, uh, it is pretty easy to, to implement an addition instruction because it is linear, uh, so uh, it behaves good with this kind of invariant. And the problem is to, to, uh, to implement the multiplication uh, uh, the multiplication uh, instruction. So in order to see how to do this, let us go even further in the application, the, in the uh, implementation of the HSS protocol. So the setting is that we have some cryptographic group generated by some generator G. And uh, suppose that we have some uh, output of a multiplication, uh, of a multiplication instruction so if we, uh, 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 so, so it turns out that the parties can multiplicate, multiplicatively share uh, g to the power of z. Uh, that means that each, each one of the uh, servers has some uh, group element so that the, the product of the, this element equal to g to the z. Um, and the main problem in, in, in the HSS protocol is to somehow uh, transform this multi multi multiplicative share into additive ones. Um, so, so this is the share co conversion problem, and it has a very simple solution. Basically, if you just uh, compute the discrete logs of, the, uh, of, of, of your input, uh, you, you can transform uh, mul multiplicative things in, into additive ones. Um, However, this is very inefficient, uh, you know, taking discrete log is out. And um, so in order to solve the, the share conversion problem, uh, BGI introduced the, the DD log problem, a uh, distributed discrete log problem. Uh, in this problem, we search for two algorithms, A and B, um, so, that, uh, uh, so that they transform the input difference in the, uh, in the exponent to an integer additive difference in the output. So there is uh, a difference in the exponent and we transform it to uh, some, uh, some difference in the, uh, in the output. So basically we can do this by ju just by taking logs. However, we search for a, a trade-off between the running times of the algorithms A and B and, uh, and, 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 the, and we give them the space to, to error with some probability. So we search for a trade-off between the error probability and the running times. So it, if you uh, see the details, then you can see that you can uh, solve the shell conversion problem if we have a solution for the distributed discrete log problem. Um, so let us now get to, to our results. Um, so our main result is, a, is an optimal DD log protocol. We devised a DD log protocol with error probability of one over uh, T squared, which improves upon the BGI DD log protocol that obtain an error probability of one over T. Um, this error probability of one over T is basically the, the error of the basic algorithm we had, we had earlier. Um, so this is the main, uh, the main result. The second result uh, is 
uh, and the, the optimality part of the of our uh, of our algorithm, which means that the protocol is optimal in group satisfying the uh, discrete log in a short interval hardness assumption, which is assumed to uh, this hardness assumption is uh, is assumed to hold in all standard cryptographic groups. Um, uh, lastly. Uh, uh, we can apply the the the, the log protocol uh, and 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 improve uh, the the efficiency of of the HSS protocol. So basically, we uh, we improve the running time from uh, of the evaluation functions of the servers from s squared to s to the three f's, where where s is the uh, is the number of multiplication multiplications in the in the program F we want to compute. So how, how, how does the, the DDLog protocol uh, uh, implies uh, HSS? So basically, HSS, uh, for every multiplication, HSS needs to solve a D, some DDLog problem. So if we look on all the DDLog problems needed to, to be solved in a, in a single uh, in, in, a sing, in, in a single program uh, and use our DD log protocol, the total error probability of the, of the DD log algorithms is S over T squared. By taking, the, uh, uh, by taking the running times of the DD log protocol to be square root of S, the overall error probability we get is a constant probability. This means that the all, the, the all uh, uh, evaluation of the, the, the time for the all evaluation of the, of the servers is uh, S times T, which is S to the three S. So this is how we improve the HSS protocol. Um, and now let us see how the, the, a problem, a solution for the spaceship problem implies a solution for the DD log problem. So basically, uh, to solve DD log problem, you just, uh, let, uh, you just make A and B uh, arrive on the on the uh, on the array full of uh, power of powers of G, um, and start them on adjacent cells. Uh, th then we solve the spaceship problem with our black box that solve uh, that solves spaceship problem, and and after uh, Alice and Bob synchronized on some uh, on some on some position, then each one of them can uh, can output the distance. Uh, between its starting point and its stopping point, and uh, because Alice and Bob started on adjacent cells, the the difference between the, their uh, their outputs is going to be uh, one as needed. Except for of, of course the probability the spaceship's problem was not solved. And uh, we also need to perform a pseudo-random function over the of this uh, over this array so that. Uh, because group elements are not uh, really random. Okay, so uh, this uh, this is why. Uh, okay, now now we got we get to the spaceship problem uh, again, um, and we we want to improve the the basic algorithm. So let us re revisit the basic algorithm. Um, so suppose we uh, as a game of thought, suppose we let the basic algorithm use only f the number of steps we it had before. So how does this going to affect to the, the error probability of the algorithm? Um, so basically, because the error probability of the basic algorithm is uh, of the order of 1 over t, uh, 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 using only f the number of, of steps uh, increases the error probability by a constant. But now we have many steps left. So the main question is, how should we invest these remaining steps in order to reduce the error probability? The answer for this question is a two-stage st algorithm. Um, the first stage in this, uh, in this algorithm is just using the basic algorithm with f the number of steps, as, as we just saw. And uh, the, the second stage is, to, is, is basically the same. Uh, you just, each spaceship just reads some uh, v values from the array, and then goes back and stop on the minimal value uh, it encounters. So in, in this sense, this is the same. However, this time, uh, the, the, the values we uh, query from the array are on some random walk. Uh, this random walk starts from the, 
the, uh, the, the stopping point of the, of the former uh, stage. Uh, and then uh, the, the steps of, of each of the, uh, the, the steps of each sta spaceship only depends on the, on the most recent value he read from the, from the array. Um, so this is how the two-stage algorithm goes. Um, and uh, let us quickly analyze this, uh, this algorithm, th this protocol. Um, so the main point in, in this, uh, this two-stage two, two algorithm is that if the parties uh, uh, manage to synchronize in the first stage, they will remain, uh, they will, will remain uh, synchronized in the, in the second stage because the, the, the size of the jump only depends on the current uh, value they read. Um, and and don't, do not forget that the error probability of the first stage is already small, is, al is already one over t. Um, so uh, now we want to understand what is the error probability of the second stage given that the first stage failed. So the parties, uh, so the spaceships uh, begin with a distance uh, of, of t, and they make uh, t over two steps of size square root of t. Um, the idea is that uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the spaceships are going to, uh, the, the, the random walks of the, of the second stage are going to meet in about square root of t uh, steps. Uh, why is that? Because uh, in order for A to pass the, the location of B, it needs square root of t steps because each uh, step size of A is about uh, square root of t and the initial distance between A, a, is a and B and is t. Uh, after reaching uh, the region of B, then uh, it's a standard uh, birthday paradox uh, argument that says that the, the random walks of the parties are going to collide in about square root of t steps. Um, so overall, the parties share about, uh, share all their steps except for square root of t steps. Um, this means that because they share all, almost uh, all, the, all the steps they have, uh, then with very high probability, they are going to have the same minimum. And, and so they are going to, to stop on the same location. Overall, the total failure probability of the two-stage algorithm is two to the minus three f's, uh, which is better than the basic algorithm, of course. Um, okay, so we can ask this question again. Uh, suppose we have some black box that, uh, that implements the two-stage algorithm. Now let's give it only f the number of steps we have. Uh, so again, uh, this is only going to increase our error probability by a constant. Um, and, but now, again, we have many steps left. So we can ask, what, what can we do with the, with the remaining steps we have? Um, so the answer is, we perform a third stage. Uh, we perform a, 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 a third stage which have a larger uh, step size. Um, okay, so continuing this line of thought, uh, we, we use many steps uh, with increasing uh, step sizes, and, and by taking, there are many parameters in which the algorithm depends on. For example, the, the number, of, the distribution of steps in each stage, and the, the sizes of steps in, in each of these stages. So if we carefully uh, choose parameters then, uh, and use many stages instead of two or three, we can get an error probability of one over t squared. Um, the analysis is quite, uh, is quite complex, so we also uh, we, we proved this formally, and also we, we valid validated the, the, this result with extensive sim simulations. Uh, we proved it, but we also validated it. Uh, yeah, and uh, okay, let us now summarize everything we have. Uh, we have some algorithm that enables A and B to synchronize except for probability one over T squared. 
Um, but this used that the, we, we used that the distance between Alice and Bob is one, so start with one. So, so a natural question is, what happens if uh, the spaceships start with some unknown distance m? Uh, what, what's now? So it turns out that if they use exactly the same algorithm, they can still uh, meet except for, uh, for, uh, for a small probability, uh, the optimal probability, which is m over t squared. Um, so why that? Um, to see this, uh, introduce some fictitious parties um, that follow exactly the same algorithm Alice and Bob uh, uh, follow. Uh, now, to analyze the probability that Alice and Bob do not synchronize, notice that in order for Alice and Bob to not synchronize, we must have two consecutive uh, people that did not manage to synchronize, because if everyone managed to synchronize with uh, their successive, so, uh, then so Alice and Bob will synchronize. Um, so the probability of Alice and Bob to not synchronize is union-bounded, un union bounded by the probability of A and C to not synchronize, plus the probability of C and D to not synchronize, plus the probability of D and E to not synchronize, and so on. And this gives that the, uh, the part is synchronized except for this small probability. Um, another interesting thing is that our algorithm is optimal. Um, basically, the uh, uh, the, the discrete log in a short interval uh, problem is, suppose we have some cryptographic group G generated by a generator uh, small g, uh, and let R be some small, uh, small, re small interval. So given some uh, input G to the X where X is small, you need to find X. This is the discrete log in, in short, short interval problem, and the discrete log uh, in short interval hardness assumption is solve the this discrete log problem in a short interval. So uh, you can, if you think about it a little, you can see that the DD log protocol uh, solved the, uh, solve the, uh, the discrete log in a short interval in, in the optimal time. Um, so the, the, the DLI hardness assumption is assumed uh, as far as we know on all uh, standard uh, families of cryptographic groups. Um, so hence the, uh, the, our DD log pro protocol is optimal. And let, let us summarize everything we had. Um, we presented the distributed discrete log problem. Then we presented an optimal algorithm solving the DD log uh, problem. And we improved the error probability of the DD log algorithm from uh, error probability of 1 over t to an error probability of 1 over t squared, which is a uh, quadratic improvement. And then we add some application to, to homomorphic secret sharing, um, uh, optimizing the, the running time of the evaluation from s squared to s to the, to the, f, uh, f, to the three f's, uh, where s is the size of the, of the program we want to, to homomorphically compute. Um, so uh, uh, in the paper, we have the, uh, some, some other interesting stuff. Uh, among them, we have a form analysis of the protocol. Uh, we use many kinds of martingales, martingales in order to prove this. We also have, have a matching lower bound assuming the DLI hardness assumption. Uh, we also have a lower bound assuming the, uh, the generic group model. And in, interestingly, we also prove uh, uh, that the basic algorithm is in some sense, sense, some sense optimal. It is an optimal non-adaptive protocol in generic group model. This basically means if, that if you make some small variations to the, to the basic algorithm, you cannot go better than uh, the basic algorithm. Uh, and interestingly, the proof uses Fourier analysis. Uh, thank you. All right, so I think we have time for maybe one question. Because we're running close. So, all right, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs>